Hey, hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks out there. Welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host, meteorologist DT, the, the colonel of confusion, the captain of catastrophe, the commander of chaos. It's Sunday evening, 10.30 p.m., March 31st. Duke is out of the NCAA. All is right with the world. The baseball season is beginning. It's Easter. Let's talk about weather. Lots to say. All right, we'll start out by talking with a couple of different topics here. Yes, the winter is over. It's finally over. It makes you want to sing. Uh, major rains coming up here for the Deep South this week and then up to North Carolina, Virginia, Maryland, and Delaware. Maybe to Philly, April 5th and 6th. That's Friday and Saturday. A super wet pattern coming up here for the Midwest in the 6 to 10 day and the 11 to 15 day, warming up over the eastern third of the country. And then it looks like the MJO may be coming out of the circle of death, and week three and four look pretty warm over the eastern U.S. So let's take a look. We'll talk first with the major rains coming up here for the Deep South, April 5th and 6th. All right, this is the current pattern here uh, as of Sunday afternoon, and we can see the uh, several distinct features here. Let me point them out to you. Uh, first, uh, notice this big, huge ball of energy. There's two of them, this upper level energy coming in from the Pacific. Now, we can see our ridging. See the ridging I draw out right here? Okay, there's the flow coming down. Okay, that's going to provide the cold front here this week, April 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. But the NAO is definitely weakening. You can see it here. This is definitely weakening. We have three distinct vortexes, one over in Kamchatka in eastern Siberia, another one in central Eurasia and the other one over Hudson's Bay. And this pattern will begin to break down. These, this feature here is what's going to cause the pattern to change and move out of the last stages of winter into solidly spring. Now, this is the radar map as of 9 o'clock. We can see a little bit of activity here. There might be snow over the uh, western Iowa there. There's another cold front. This is the reinforcing one coming through here. This is the stuff that came through Virginia, North Carolina on Easter morning. And there's the other front, which is stalling over the deep south. And uh, that's going to set up a weather pattern coming up here. Now, this is the European for, thurs uh, for Thursday, April 4th. And we can see our high um, setting up quite nicely right here. Mo moving out to sea, southeast winds. See the southeast winds coming in? There's our low and an inverted trough. So a lot of rain coming in this area here. There's the next cold front like that. And... Uh, the next slide, this is the uh, operational European for April 5th. Here's the low. It's got the rain coming up to about D.C. You can see it very nicely. Uh, not much further north than that than the model takes it off the coast. But the rain gets up to about D.C. or Philly. A lot of rain in this whole area. Uh, so far, so good. The next slide is the European Ensemble. It has a low, a little larger, a little deeper. And it looks like the rain may get up to Philly or maybe New York City. Um, Here's the cold front to the north. It doesn't look like the cold front arrives in time. Whoops. <laughs> there it is, like that. So I think the rain may get up to New York City, Philly, but we'll see. Uh, and again, that's for April 5th. All right. And then beyond that, this is the European, the five-day rainfall total. A lot of rain here for the deep south. I mean, this is impressive rain. Even over Texas and Oklahoma as well, they could use the rain. Everybody, you can see it in here. Uh, not so much the Midwest and the Central Plains, the Upper Plains, but definitely all the Deep South, and in Virginia and North Carolina and Maryland as well. Now, this is the GFS of the ensembles for the next five days. A lot of rain here over the Deep South. You can see it very nicely. Now, it doesn't have as much rain in Virginia as the uh, European does because it does something a little differently with the low, but it's got some rain in Virginia and Maryland. Let's talk about the winter. Yes, it's over. I mean, it's actually finally over, and I'll explain to you why. When we look at the teleconnections here, we see the things beginning to change. Yeah, the Arctic, the Arctic oscillation here, okay, is very, it reaches again a very low level here. It drops back down again April 3rd, but then look, it climbs dramatically and steadily so that by April 10th, it's above the neutral zone, and by April 15th, it's uh, in the positive area. Now, this is the NAO. Again, it's negative right now, as we can see. Uh, early here in late March, early April, but then it crosses the neutral area by April 8th, and then it's all positive up in here. So the NAOs now goes positive, and I think that's correct. I think the models clearly show that. This is the western NAO. Again, this is about the blocking when it's in eastern Canada and Greenland, which is what we had on March 6th and what we had on March 24th. So the pattern still was showing that initially here, March 1st and April 2nd and March 31st, April 1st, and 2nd, but by April 4th, it begins to climb, and then it's all positive after April 7th. So that's another sign that the NAO is breaking down. And this here is the Eastern Pacific Oscillation, and this refers to Alaska and the ridge in Alaska. So when this is negative, here you have a positive PNA. 
right? And when this is positive, you have a negative PNA. And we'll see that with the next slide. Here is the uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Here's the uh, PNA. There it is. Exact opposite. See, opposite. See that opposite. Exact opposite. So, and sure enough, the uh, PNA is now positive, West Coast Ridge, and then it drops down negative, which in implies a, we a West Coast trough and a Southeast U.S. Ridge, which implies a warmer pattern. You see how that works? Okay. Let's talk about the super wet uh, Midwest pattern in the 6 to 10 day and 11 to 15 day, uh, and then also the warming over the eastern U.S. Now, this is the uh, day 7 uh, European ensemble, and we can see something very important here. Um, this feature here is now over Alaska before it was over here. And by going to Alaska, what that does is that enhances the Pacific jet, so you now get a trough over the west coast and ridging developing here. So whenever, whenever you get a feature in Alaska, whether it's January or July, you're going to get a trough on the west coast, and you're going to get ridging over the southeast. That is a, that's, 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 that's what that feature means, having a big vortex over Alaska. All right? Good. Okay, next slide. Now, let's take a look at the operational impacts of this. This is April 7th, the European, uh, a week from today. And we can see this big system in here. There's the fronts like this. A lot of rain up all up in here. Look at the warm temperatures coming up from the deep south into Kentucky, into Virginia, into Pennsylvania, into Ohio, south of the front. Now, of course, this is, like I said, this is going to be a big rain producer, this feature right here. This is going to be a, a big rain producer over the Ohio Valley, no doubt about it, and the Midwest, okay? And then um, this is the European Ensemble, same sort of thing. There it is, the same feature. It's the same idea. A lot of rain coming from the Midwest. And this is the uh, G this is the European six to ten day. Pfft, looks like a lot of rain for the Midwest. I think we just said that. This is the GFS for the uh, six to ten day. A lot of rain for the Midwest. I think we just said that. And then this is the uh, Ensembles for day ten. And again, notice here, this feature is over Alaska. See that? Now we have a ridge over the southeastern United States. Now we have a trough over the west coast of the United, or the western U.S. That's what that feature always does. And, uh, you know, we still have the feature in, in, over Siberia, Alaska here. And this uh, number three is still in place. So there's a lot of cold air up in Canada. Uh, so I can't say we're not going to ever get cold again. But definitely we're in a springtime pattern here. Now this is the day 10 uh, European operational run. And let me just change color here so you can see this. Uh, we'll go with that. And here's the front right there. See it? There's the big high. A lot of rain up in here. A lot of rain. Look at the warm temperatures coming up. Wham, wham, wham. That's awful nice looking for some folks who like the warm weather. And this is the European Ensemble. Same sort of thing. Um, the low is somewhere in here. And there's the front like this. Very warm and down here. A lot of rain up in here. Very consistent. Very obvious. Very easy weather pattern in the forecast. Now this is, 10, this is 16 days out. This is the the uh, GFS, um, uh, you know, uh, April 15th, the GFS ensemble mean, not just the operational run. And we can see the high off the coast, the inflow coming in here this way, and then another low here, another front stalled in here, a lot of rain for the Midwest. And we'll take a look at that in a second. This is the uh, uh, operational run uh, for the GFS, the 11 to 15 day, a lot of rain here. My goodness, look at all this. Woo! And then... Um, this is the uh, GFS Ensemble, showing the same sort of thing. A lot of rain here over the, as you can see, um, Arkansas up in the Midwest, so on and so forth. So pretty impressive looking pattern. Okay. Now let's talk about the MJO for a second. Here's the MJO, and we can see that it's coming out of the circle, and there's March 30th. And it looks like it's going to go into Phase 3 and Phase 4. And if we uh, follow that along, we see that. This is the European Ensembles, we can see. Um, it, clearly, it, it clearly shows... The uh, coming out into phase three and phase four. This is the operational European, I should say. The next one is the uh, European ensemble. There it has it coming out in phase four. And then by April 14th, the GFS has it in phase three. And what does that mean? Well, this is, of course, temperatures. See that for April. And phase three, really cold in here. And phase four, somewhat cold in the Midwest, but pretty cold. Now, with regard to precipitation, Phase three again, look. 
pretty wet over the Midwest. So this is a wet cool pattern, not a cold pattern for snow, but a cool pattern. In other words, the temperatures are running below normal because it's overcast and it's always raining. Now phase four is, looks pretty dry in here, but phase three is definitely wet over the Midwest. Okay, and this is we can see the changes going on here. Make sure we're on the right. Yeah, the, the changes here um, with the uh, CFS. Now this is the CFS. Let me show you what's happening here. All these changes with the MJO, with the changing teleconnections, uh, with the overall changing pattern, has affected what looks like April is going to look like. Now, uh, let me show you. This here is March 27th. Okay, look how cold the, the the CFS was for Canada and for the Upper Plains and the Midwest. East Coast a little bit, but mostly over the Midwest and the Central and Upper Plains and Canada. You see that? Now here's the updated version. Whoa. That is totally different. Sure, Canada's still cold. Got that part. But look how warm it is in here now. Pretty impressive. That's only four days later. That's a pretty big change. And again, we can see this with the rain. This is at March 24th. And we can see up top, the March 24th here. And again, look how wet it was over the southeast. And look how dry it was up in here. See all how dry it was? But if we go to the new one, now it's still dry, but the dryness is over uh, the east coast into the Midwest and that area. And here, rain over Texas a little bit, and uh, mi the Western Corn Belt sees some rain, but still very wet and cool over Canada. Okay. And, um, oops, let me make sure we're right about that. And we go back here. Now, this is the CFS that changed the pattern. And what's happened here is that the... Uh, let me call it my market here. We can see a very big positive anomaly here. So what the map is showing is we have a ridge this way, and then a trough, and then the ridge like this. You see? Like this. This is what the pattern is. So this is really going to set up a warm pattern for the eastern United States, and, by the way, for Spain and Western Europe as well. And if we go to the next slide, we'll see, in fact, that is the case. This is uh, week three and four, and this is dramatically different from what it was showing just a few days ago. Look how warm it is over the Great Lakes, the Midwest, the East Coast, the Northeast, week three and week four. This is April 21st, see that, and 27th, and this is April 14th and April 20th. So really, really warm common temperatures on the CFS, all because these big changes in the last several days going on with all these teleconnections and the MJO and the other factors, and that's why it looks like we'll be turning warmer finally in the second half of April, a sustained warm pattern, but still a very wet one over the Midwest. I believe that's all I got. Yes, we are set. So uh, we'll see how this changes and how it develops. I don't think it's going to flip back. I think we're here for spring and finally getting some warm weather in the eastern United States. This is meteorologist DT. I'll talk to you soon.